All right. Before we get into the actual comic review, um, Chris had sent me a package, and as of this recording, there was, he told me that there was going to be two others that coming today. So um, I've already looked in the package, so I'm just going to go through the thing real quick and talk about what you'll be seeing for the future of this channel. And, yeah. So... As always, Chris, thank you so much, my brother, for sending me these comics. We are in the Marvel Hall, as he calls it. And starting off, we have Daredevil and Echo by Taboo, one of the members of Black Eyed Peas. He had done, um, he had created, Taboo had created um, the new Werewolf by Night, which I thought was, eh, it was all right. Nothing too spectacular. Um, but I'm looking forward to this, um, to see Daredevil and Echo back together, um, hanging out. It's also, it looks like it's got Ghost Rider in it, too, so that's going to be cool. I also saw what looked like Demo Goblin in it, and I'm always a sucker for Demo Goblin. So, yeah. And also, Spider-Punk, Battle of the Band. This and Daredevil and Echo were two comics. I had a good knowledge of what was in, in this, uh, in this uh, package, but Chris likes to sneak a few in there. So, these were one of those. So, I'm very much looking... This is going to be my first time reading anything Spider-Punk. It's not because I don't like the character. It's mostly because, like, the Spider-Verse character... Uh, like, all those comics just kind of exploded everywhere. But Spider-Punk was the breakout character for Across the Spider-Verse. So, I'm curious to see how his universe is going to go. Also, he sent me two new pops as well to add to the wall. Starting off, we have the werewolf from Werewolf by Night. You know, Jack Russell in his uh, all his glory. And I know it says Venom, but this isn't a, a specific Venom. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Miles Morales Venom, which came from the comic series um, Dark Ages, where Miles bonded with the Venom symbiote and the Carnage symbiote, and was also he was mind controlled by the Purple Man and Apocalypse in that story. Um, he didn't get to do much, sadly. They didn't really give him much to do because the comic only went for, like, what, five, six issues and it wrapped up real fast. I think it was meant to be 12 issues, but then Tom Taylor w took a job at DC and he just wrapped it up and went, fuck y'all, I'm out. <laughs> anyway, but we're here, speaking of comics, we're going to be here talking about Invincible Iron Man, the demon in the armor. So Invincible Iron Man, demon in the armor, what is that? Demon in the Armor is the new, uh, the start of the new Iron Man run from Jerry Duggan, f um, picking up from Christopher Cantwell, which I have not read, but I heard Cantwell's Iron Man was short but awesome. It was like an underrated epic, um, which sounds really cool. Like Iron, like Tony creates this thing called the Iron God and battles Michael Korvik. Cool. I would really love to read that someday. But Jerry Duggan's Iron Man, um, this is the start of Volume One, and basically. Um, here's the thing, guys. I've never been a big Iron Man guy. I like seeing Iron Man show up. I love seeing the character, um, be a part of things. But I've never been, like, an Iron Man fan. I like, not to say I don't like Iron Man, it's just we tell the same fucking story every goddamn time. That's the thing, is that we tell the same comic of the same story over and over again and this kind of does the same thing where Tony's lost everything and now he has to fight you know battling his way upwards until he lose and get his company back oh no he's lost his company again rinse and fucking repeat let me build a new armor let me push away all my friends this kind of does the same thing but yeah however this does something, like, it's a story you've heard a hundred times before, but Duggan even feel, uh, even is like, yeah, you know this comic, I'm, it, but uh, you know, uh, you know what this comic is, I know what this comic is, let's try to have some fun. For starters, the, I, uh, you know, Tony in here is battling a new enemy, or rather, a new enemy that is someone else's enemy. See, um, Iron Man's new foe in here is Fei Long, one of the, one of the heads of Orchis, and once has taken over and is trying to destroy Tony's life to get a hold of Stark Unlimited, there and for getting hold of the Repulsor tech, leading to, as we now know, the Stark Sentinels. I do like the idea of of Tony being of now being part of the X Men universe, um, in more ways than one, which we'll get into. But I do like the idea of like this opponent is like. I even love that moment where Tony's like, so, so Fei Long, did the X-Men kick your ass so bad you had to go fight me instead? Um, Fei Long is a pretty interesting villain to make both an X-Men and Iron Man villain. I know during Fall of X they're going to do an X-Men Iron Man event involving the Stark Sentinels. Um, looking forward to that. 
Iron Man, you know, Tony in here does have his life systematically picked apart. Like he's, uh, uh, they fake him, make you know, Fei Long makes him to feel like a fake, like they fake him being an alcoholic again. Tony also um, gets attacked by the living laser, one of his friends who was just made for this comic because Duggan really liked Armor Wars. Let's be real. Armor Wars is the like is one of two Iron Man stories that everyone remembers and everyone likes. It's Armor Wars and Demon in a Bottle. That's fucking it. Don't tell me otherwise. Like yeah, like if you're an Iron Man fan, it's Armor Wars, Demon in a Bottle, and some other random shit that I haven't read. But um, the, uh, Armor Wars really plays a lot of factor in this, like. I do give credit to Duggan that him and the creative team behind this really cap... When they do flashbacks to the Armor Wars era, they really do capture that era of comics. And between you and me, guys, I really do like the sil seeing the Silver Centron armor. That's probably one of my favorite Iron Man armors. Probably my... It banties between the Iron Man armor, um, the Silver Centron armor, like the silver and red armor and the armor we saw that that was the inspiration for the armor that was big in the late 80s early 90s that armor that inspired the animated the iron man cartoon that armor is really cool too i really do enjoy that as well um but i do like this mark 70 armor here tony also is like also tells like fei long right to his face you know you know how many people have tried to do this what you're doing and you want to know how many of them are still alive none and I advise, like, Tony, like, straight up tells him, I don't, like, I'll fucking kill you, man. Like, you, <laughs> you, th what, do you think I'm Captain America, dude? <laughs> like, do you, do you really, th like, ask, you know, ask Justin Hammer, or ask Obadiah Stane. Oh, you can't, because they're fucking dead. I want, like, I want you to really think on that, Fei Long. But the other major thing in here is that this is the start of the romance between Tony and Emma Frost. Um, that becomes a bigger part in the second volume. But yeah, it also is like, yeah, we know we can't trust romances in comics, especially Marvel comics. But I love the idea that Duggan is putting, like, two people that we have the most awful relationship, but at the same time, it makes the most sense. Emma and Tony, two wealthy elites who have done scrupulous things in the past and also have, like, a, an ego that would eclipse the sun... Could you just imagine that relationship? I feel like that's what Duggan really wanted to write with this comic, was have Emma and... And, I, and I'm and i sorry, Chris, but Emma's one of my favorite X-Men. Yeah, I've said that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's going to be probably one of the most controversial takes you'll hear on this channel, is that Emma Frost is one of my favorite X-Men. So, to see her with Tony and hang out with her is really cool. There's also, like, a retcon callback to win... Uh, she was involved in the Armor Wars and mind-controlled the Sinister Six. That's a thing, that's a sentence I just had. Um, all in all, this is pretty fun. I'm really, like, it's nice groundwork, but it's nothing you, if you are, if you've no, if you've read one Iron Man story, you've read them all, really. But I will say, Duggan does, is like, look, I know we've been here before, even the comic is referential of, yeah, we've been here before, but let's try something different this time around. And I do like that, and I'm very excited to read Volume 2, because that uh, that's going to give us what I really want to read with this comic, is Tony and Emma's relationship. That's what I'm really excited for more, is to see Tony and Emma play off of each other. That's what I'm more excited for, honestly. Volume 1 is more groundwork, and yeah. So, this is going to be really cool. Um, also, I can't wait to see either Tony or the X-Men during Fall of X kill Fei Long, because what he does... There's a scene in here... That, that he pulls some shit and makes you go, I hope Tony fucking rips your head off, dude. And you'll know it, it's in it's in later in the story, but yeah. Anyway, so once again, Chris, thank you so much for this comic, as well as the other ones, as well as the pops and the other comics coming. And you guys tell me in the comments below, if you've read Iron Man, Demon in the Armor, let me know what you guys thought of it. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.